The valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or also known as the Vesper theory, um, talks about the molecular shape. So now that we've talked about um, like how these covalent compounds can form, how they're going to you know, share electrons to form bonds, now we can start thinking of whenever we're looking at a particular um, molecule, what shape does it have? Uh, the shape of a molecule and of these uh, chemicals is really important in kind of how they work and kind of how they're able to um, bind to other things. So if you think of like a pharmaceutical type drug, most of these drugs go in and inhibit or bind to proteins that are in the body. The shape of the molecules is really important for them to be able to find and bind to their target. So this is kind of like the very fundamentals of understanding that type of molecular shape. Um, so what we're going to do is look at shape around particular atoms within a molecule. So if you look at this slide here, it says um, to determine the molecular shape, first we want to determine how many groups surround an atom. And we're going to define a group as either an atom or a lone pair of an electrons. Um, and then it says use Vesper theory to determine the shape. And the idea to this is, and there's a table kind of towards the end of this video that will kind of summarize everything that you need to memorize. And this is really just stuff that you need to memorize. But we're going to look at kind of the shape that, um, that is formed around a particular atoms as well as like the bond angles that kind of lead to that particular shape. But the idea here with the Vesper theory is they want to keep the groups as far away from each other as possible. So <clears throat> you could imagine if you are... Um, sitting in your chair, wherever you are right now, and you are the central atom and you were holding two things and you want to get them as far away from each other as possible. You would grab one thing in your right hand and stick it straight out. You would grab the other one in your left hand, you would stick it straight out. So the angle around you in the middle there would be a 180 degree angle because everything would just go right around you and we would call that shape linear. right? So we're going to go through a number of these examples um, on the next few slides to talk about the shape that can be formed around particular atoms. All right, and this is the example that I was just describing, a linear one. So this is an atom surrounded by two groups. Um, two groups, and in this case, like for the example given is CO2, carbon dioxide down here. Um, so if you were to say, what, what shape is around this particular carbon? Well, you say, okay, what is the carbon bound to? It was bound to one group over here, that oxygen it's bound to another group over here, that oxygen. So that carbon is bound to two groups and no lone pairs. Okay, so that means it's going to be linear and the bond angle is going to be 180 degrees, which you can see here. All right, um, notice at the bottom it says ignore multiple bonds. So even though it's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen on both sides, you don't say that there's four bonds. I mean, you would say there's four bonds, but not whenever we're talking about molecular shape. With molecular shape, you're specifically talking about how many different things is it attached to. So in this case, it's two groups, and it makes it linear. All right, so our next example is when an atom is surrounded by three groups, and we call this trigonal planar, right? So you can see on the, on the screen, right, all of those atoms are in one plane. So they can... Uh, if you look over here at the one on the left, right, that's spinning around this way, you could rotate it and get it looking this way. But no matter what happens, those, all of those atoms are going to be in one plane, starting with that central molecule. Um, the bond angles, whenever you have trigonal planar, are 120 degrees, right? So it's 120 degrees, 120, and another 120. That makes that 360 degree circle with everything in the same plane. So again, in this case, it's three groups. So if you look at this carbon, it's attached to one group here, one group there, and one group there. So there's three groups and no lone pairs of electrons attached to it. And that gives you trigonal planar. All right, the next one is going to be tetrahedral. This is a very, very common one for carbon because we said carbon forms four bonds. So if you look at this carbon, if it, bond, if it has four bonds, um, basically, no double bonds. The one we looked at on the previous slide, the carbon had a double bond. But in this case, you have a carbon that is bound to four different things, right? Um, this is going to be tetrahedral. This wedge um, line down here basically means that if you're looking at that red um, carbon in the middle, this blue sphere is coming out of the screen to you. So if you're looking at this on the computer, that 
this particular blue sphere here would be coming directly out towards your face. And the one with the dashed line would be going behind the plane of the screen, which makes it gives it that three-dimensional shape. And it's kind of shown a little bit better over here. Um, so usually the way I describe this is imagine um, grabbing one thing and putting it straight above you. The other one, this is the one up here that's straight above you. This one is kind of down and to the left. Now these two are in the same plane as each other. And then this one comes out of the screen towards you and this one goes out behind you. So this one kind of goes behind you and to the, to the side. This one's out in front and to the side. So again, the goal is to get those four things as far away from each other as possible. That leads to a tetrahedral molecule, which has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Okay, so next up we have a couple that deal with lone pairs. So if you have four groups, but it's three atoms and one lone pair. So for instance, with NH3, so nitrogen has one, two, three atoms attached to it. Then the fourth group is attached to it, but it's a lone pair of electrons. We refer to this as trigonal pyramid, or sometimes you'll see it written as trigonal pyramidal with an A-L at the end. You'll see it written both ways. But trigonal pyramid or trigonal pyramidal basically means that you're going to have these um, three groups. And then up here, not depicted, is going to be the lone pair of electrons. So it's very similar to a tetrahedral like we just looked at, except a lone pair of electrons occupy that one part of the tetrahedral. Um, in that what they actually do is push the other groups down a little bit, which is why this angle here is 107 and not the 109.5 we looked at before. So it says here the bond angles are approximately 109.5. Usually they're a tiny bit less because those electrons tend to push everything down. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the specifics of the angle. What I want you to do is be able to, if I were to give you a structure like this one, you should be able to tell me that that has trigonal pyramid geometry and if I were to give you like a bond angle between like that nitrogen, like around hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen, say what's that angle? You should be able to pick it out um, close to 109.5. Like on a multiple choice test, I would give you like 109.5, 180, 120, right? Something like that. And you would pick from them. All right. So the last one we're going to look at here is when you have four groups again. But this time you have two groups that are atoms oxygen has the atoms attached to it and then the other two groups are the lone pairs so two atoms and two lone pairs that gives you bent geometry so bent right and whenever it's bent basically again you have that tetrahedron right and you have two of the spots occupied by lone pairs of electrons it kind of pushes the other groups a little bit closer to each other so in a bent molecule usually you're closer to about 105 degrees in water, it's like 104.5. So again, it kind of pushes it even more than it does with the trigonal pyramidal one. All right, so here is your main table that you need to know. So again, this has it broken down into the five different shapes, linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, and bent. It shows you their approximate angles. And then again, the distinction between how many atoms it's bound to and how many lone pairs of electrons there are. Right? So this will cover everything. Um, you should be able to recognize, like for instance, carbons are commonly going to be tetrahedral because they have four bonds and no lone pairs. Nitrogens are commonly going to be trigonal pyramidal right? because nitrogens typically have three bonds and one lone pair. Um, oxygens are typically going to be bent. Um, carbons can also be trigonal planar, right? That's the one that most frequently gets uh, trigonal planar whenever you have a carbon with a double bond in there. And then linear isn't too common. Um, that can happen with a, a variety of different molecules, though. Uh, again, mostly, a lot of times people will confuse bent and linear because they'll forget about the lone pairs. But again, memorize this table. Um, understand this chart, and you should be good to go in terms of molecular shape. All right, so now let's look at a couple examples. What is the shape around the circled atom in each? So in this first one, what is the shape around that carbon? So the way we would determine this is we would look at that carbon and say, okay, what is attached to it? Well, we say it has one, two, 
three, four bonds, and the carbon has no lone pairs. I know that the chlorines on there have lone pairs, but again, you're looking at the shape around that central atom, so specifically the carbon. So this has four bonds, zero lone pairs. If we go to our um, table, four bonds or four atoms, no lone pairs, that's going to be tetrahedral. So tetrahedral. Okay, and we could also, I could also ask you what are the bond angles around that carbon, and you would say they're about 109.5 degrees. Great. Let's go to the one down here. What is the shape around that nitrogen? The circle doesn't, almost covers them up, but the key here is noticing that there's a lone pair there. Um, but even if that, you don't see that lone pair there, you should know that that lone pair has to be there because, again, remember, everything always has to have an octet of electrons. So around that nitrogen, you have two, four, six. You need to have a lone pair up here to make eight. So in this case, we have um, three bonds, one lone pair, and I guess really I should say three atoms attached to it. Right, because again, we don't necessarily want to count um, double bonds if they show up as different bonds. So let's go with three atoms attached to it, one lone pair. This is going to give us trigonal pyramid. And again, if I were to ask you for the um, bond angle, you would say this one is going to be approximately 109.5 degrees again. Right, maybe a little bit less than that, but that's close enough. Okay, so now let's go over here to the next one. Here's another carbon. Right, so this carbon has a double bond. So in this case, we want to say, okay, this carbon is attached to one, two, three different atoms. So we'll go up here and we'll say three atoms. That carbon has no lone pairs. Going over here, three atoms, no lone pairs. That's going to be trigonal planar. Right, different than the one we just did down here where we had three atoms and one lone pair. Now we don't have a lone pair, so this one's going to be trigonal, planar, and we would say this one has bond angles of 120 degrees. Whoops, I didn't mean to put Celsius in there. We're not talking about temperature. All right, 120 degrees. And then the last one down here, SH2. So you can see, whoops, you can see the S down here. Now the one thing that's missing from that S, remember that everything has to have an octet of electrons. So if we look at the sulfur, right, the sulfur has um, one bond here, one bond there. That would be two, four electrons. We need to have two more lone pairs of electrons around that sulfur to give it an octet. So now that I've drawn it this way, you can see that there's two bonds and two lone pairs. So two bonds. Actually, again, let me rephrase that to atoms. Two atoms, two lone pairs. In this case, the geometry is going to be bent. And that would have angles of about 105 degrees. Okay. Um, if you go back to the previous slide, I said oxygen is usually one that you're going to notice is bent. If you were to look at a periodic table, oxygen is in group 6 or 6A. Um, so is sulfur. So again, uh, the commonalities between um, atoms or elements in the same group of the periodic table uh, relate to molecular shape as well.